Alrighty then, folks. We are back with more SD Gundam G Generations Genesis. So I have checked and Thoroughbred won by one point. Though, MS Saga, is, or not MS Saga, MS Igloo is right behind it. But the cool thing about that is, I'm pretty sure Thoroughbred's gonna be another two stage kind of thing. Thoroughbred's gonna be a two stage kind of thing. We're gonna have that initial battle where the they get attacked in the minefield and then we have to rescue the Thoroughbred. And then we're going to have uh, the battle where the GPO or the Gundam 4 blows up. I was about to say the GPO 4, which basically the Gundam 4 and the GPO 4 are the same suit with different designations, but whatever. And then I think MS Igloo is going to be a bit longer, maybe four to six stages. Because if it does follow both the series like it says it does, it's going to be six stages, but I'm thinking they reduced it down to four and they excluded the two more boring episodes. By boring, I mean cool, but they didn't have as cool visuals. So I think this week we'll finish up, uh, we'll finish up, God, there's so many of them. We'll finish up Thoroughbred, and then next week we'll spend that doing all of Vigaloo kind of thing. Because I got two days left to record this week, and then I got six days next week. So we're going to do this. It's also a good thing because both of these have space units, and I have everyone set up for space units. Making sure real quick. Yep. And in the if you didn't watch the interlude, we got the bigger ships, which they can all do nice things. And we got some better mobile suits, but we're not going to use them. Um. So if you'll notice with the picture, we have that crazy guy that we've already unlocked because I like shot down 10,000 enemies and I definitely just did that. And we have an action Zaku along with the Gundam 4 and 5. I've already showed you guys the Gundam 4, and we'll show you the guys the Gundam 5 in this one. Then after that, we can get past the Gundam line, which will be nice. So, let us begin. The two Gs. This whole game was made in two grand. Can I just say, I know I know why they're doing this, like, always the same opening narration, but it's kind of getting annoying. It's like, yeah, we know there's the one-year war. We've played six campaigns so far. And by drastically changing Earth's climate, they mean they actually kind of fixed it. Because, you know, the Sahara Desert is becoming desert, and... The Grand Canyon is actually having shit grow in it again. And it's not radioactive. Like, dropping the colonies were kind of bad, but they fixed a lot of the Earth. It's kind of weird like that. Oh, hey, that big tray we'll never use. I am the Thoroughbred, which is basically a white base, painted teal for some reason. They got damn two Gundams, one of which is a sniper and the other one has a Gatling gun. Which I gotta say, not a big fan of conventional weapons on Gundams. That's just me. I think they both had beam rifles, so it kind of made up for it. Hey, it's that one... It's the one operator they acknowledge doesn't exist anymore. Uh, they, they like, play up every other operator ever. Except for her. Like, I don't even know who she is. Whereas I know who the Lost War Chronicles girl is. Hell, I even know who the UC Climax girl is. Who also happens to be the same person, but that's not important. Eh. 
Exposition. Hey, wait, wasn't this that one base that they had in Zionic Front? You know, the one inside an HLV? Why are they using the base from an HLV in a Federation mobile suit? Or mobile carrier? This here is our main protagonist, Ford Renfro. Oh, Romfellow? I thought it was Renfro. Anyway, this here is Ford. He pilots the GPO 5. He is the rookie all star ace guy, whereas the other guy is not an ace. When. whatever. They wear two different suits so you can tell them apart. It's, it's fine. One's red, one's green. Or one's blue. This guy apparently survives this whole ordeal and joins the Titans before he leaves to join the AUG and disappears from history. Along with Agar, that guy from the last campaign. But remember that the... Well, actually, they're in test pilot uniforms, aren't they? So I guess technically it makes sense that they're in different ones, because test pilots don't really matter. But red generally denotes in the Federation Navy that you've gotten kills. Whereas the blue means you're just generic. Lieutenant Fold. Who's Lieutenant Fold? I know I'm not paying attention, but still. No, they weren't talking about you. They were talking about some bloke named Fold. They'll need a short time to rest because they're hopped up on amphetamines, you know, like meth or go pills, which is like Ridlin. Which I don't know if they are in Gundam, but in like real life, we used to meth the fuck out of our fighter pilots. Like a lot of them formed addictions after the war, and that's why a lot of former pilots are addicted to morphine is because there's a lot cheaper than getting Ridlin all the time. Until nowadays, where you can get it a lot easier than morphine. Hey, it's Operation Chembolo! The thing that I'm still unsure of what it is. It's the laser mirror attack on Solomon. Not particularly. Granada's on the other side. I mean, like, you just stick a big enough fleet in the middle and you can cut them off. Though, I'd be more afraid of Kaecilia than I would be from Girin. That's just because I know better. Um, they also did not build it. It was there beforehand. It was, I think, the second? It was the second settlement on the moon, I think, because Von Braun was the first. It was also Von Braun was the first extraterrestrial colony. That was way. That was about, I think, a thousand years before they started building sides, because you know sides aren't the greatest idea anyway. Yeah, 
You know, I've been noticing something. When they have two protagonists in a Gundam series, one of them always really likes killing and everyone kind of ignores the fact that they're psychotic. Like, it wasn't as bad before, but when we get into Missing Link, like, one of the characters is literally a dog who's like, kill, kill, kill. And, like, no one draws attention to this, the fact that he's just, like, talking about murdering people constantly. Oh, okay, we dispersed particles. Good luck trying to send a message. You know, those things literally damage the environment around them. They don't go away, like, ever. Alright. Is his name Ford or Fold? Because I'm pretty sure it's Fold. Or, it's Ford. But the screen says differently. And this is what I mean by you need an editor, damn it. Yeah, see, fold again. Uh, for the record, yes, I'm aware that it's Ford. I'm just making fun of the translation. Oh, come on. He's also calling her by her first name. I don't know if it, he did that in the original story or not, but that means something in Japan. Okay. So, for context, if we're inside 2, that means we're between Solomon and Aboku. We're nowhere near Granada. Being about 300,000 miles. Which I know in space isn't much, but still. Uh, we're worried about them sending messages, and we just cut off their ability to send messages. Just for the record. They want us to fight like I fight all the battles. Dude, you're talking to Ford, not Fold. Does this guy like have split personality syndrome or something? Who knows, Zax? Or One Eyes, depending on. You'll get wowed by my kill count. Alright. Don't be like, don't get hit. Okay, full death to kill five guys. Done. Easy. Okay, so he doesn't have a sniper rifle in this one. Oh my god, cat, leave. Sorry, every time I start recording, the cats get excited. But they're outside now, so they shouldn't bother us as much. I actually remember the magazine on this one, too. Hmm. 
There's a one spot. Uh, the enemy can't hit us at one spot away in a dumb. I was going to say null zone, but I can't think of the correct term. But anyway, we have to have uh, Luce, or Castle, whatever his name is. We have to have him go in for the first shot and then have Ford kill him until Ford can go super high tension and then he'll one-shot them. Which I know this decreases our accuracy, our, our accuracy by 10%, but meh. They're probably going to move into melee us, which will work fine. Hey, he has the Gatling gun, though. Also, apparently the first shot always misses. It's just part of the animation. Like, he already has the Gatling gun. Why can't we use it? And yeah, we can't control the ship. You guys got anything inside of you? No, you don't. Alright, so we'll kill these two with uh, Fold or Ford, whatever the fuck his name is. And then we have to kill two of these guys. Which shouldn't be as hard. Yep, I thought they were going to melee us. About what I expected from a melee. I don't know if that's an event thing or he's just getting real lucky. Okay, we just have to destroy all enemy units. Which means we can take as much time as we need. The reason for that is we're going to have to maximize his energy usage. Because if I just keep shooting people willy-nilly, we're not going to get enough kills. Zaku machine gun. Uh, Zaku bazooka. Works for me. Less accuracy, less damage. If all five hits get on the Zaku machine gun, it does 5,000 versus 4,600 on the Zaku bazooka. I used a lot of Zakus. I know the exact numbers. Well, that's with our pilots. I don't actually know about the AIs. Can I get you to use a bazooka again, please? Cool. Yeah, 38 chance versus our, like, 85. Dodge. Yeah, I was hoping for that. Somebody will get the kill. Alright, so we're going to go in for a melee with you. Yeah, I was hoping for that. Yeah, so next turn we'll shoot down the Musai. I just wanted to show off both of their attacks. And when we get the long rifle, I'll show off those as well. But do Musais not have anti-aircraft guns in this one? No, you don't. Awesome. Missile Barrage is only in front of the Musai. But if you don't know, in canon, that was one of the issues with the Musai, is it didn't actually have a 
anti-aircraft gun. In this game, like, I thought the Musai did, but apparently it doesn't. So, it had a hell of a time taking out Federation Saberfish and Tin Cods and their other forms of fighters. Whereas, Federation ships had anti-aircraft guns and the main particle cannons, which made them fare a little bit better against mobile suits, but not by much. Because mobile seeds were a lot, were actually more mobile than the fighters were. As weird as that sounds, because mobile seats you could, because of the AMBAC system, you could move it in like more precise manner than you continually having to go forward. They also have a three of the of the prototype. Gun cannons, I think? I don't think they have the mass production kind. But this is back in the days where the white base could only have six mobile suits. Instead of the 12 it can currently have. I believe in the Grey Phantom that number was up to eight. Can we get Grey Phantoms in this game? If we can, I'm gonna get one. I like the Grey Phantom. Though, I think only Unicorns had that animated so far. Oh, look, a Zenzaba. <laughs> Perfect quarry for me, Mallet Sanguine. And there is Old Shin. Maybe I'm just a scared human. They took down some Zakus. We haven't seen anyone able to do that before. We don't occasionally have Zakus just fall down and blow up for no good reason. But Master Mallet... I think she pilots a Bravo, doesn't she? Oh well, we'll see in a second. I'm pretty sure we kill all of them but Mallet in this battle. You know, in standard Gundam fashion. Too bad those guys aren't in Garen's Greed, you know. They would totally be good for Kaecilia Zeon. Um, not just that, but one of them has a sniper rifle literally designed to take out a fleet. It's big, it's condensed Big Zom. It's not that cool in this game, as we've seen, but it's supposed to be that cool. You guys haven't heard of U-Boats. I don't believe they have any access to World War II history. Like, at all. There's just too much shit they're walking into to have that kind of knowledge. I forgot to check quests. My bad. We'll do that when the stage starts. Hey, Lunar City of Granada. This is on the dark side of the moon, by the way. 
So you wouldn't actually be able to see it from above it. Well, you'd probably be able to see the light from it, but you wouldn't be able to see, like, light on top of it kind of thing. Yeah, give them a popola. You know, the ones I got rid of because they're shit. <laughs> and that random Chinese character. I think she's the mechanic, isn't she? Uh, the mechanic for Lost War Chronicles. It looks like a Zaku, but it's painted in Titan's colors. It's somewhere between a Galf and a Zaku, so I was going to say, yeah, that's obviously a Zaku. That dare is an action Zack. It has a laser gun. But, oh, I don't know if they'll give it a shield in this game, but originally they didn't give it the shield. But in later games, the it got the uh, Gelgoog shield, which made it really useful and actually like actually kind of liked them. But without a shield, it's kind of shit. Hey, look, it's generic Julio. He was our president in Stellaris. Till you know... It updated and that campaign got killed. But it sucked too, because we had a whole planet full of brights, and I started spreading out the brights to other colonies. It was great. They had a, their own race of brights. And if I could figure out how to modify texture packs, I would totally add that race in. Just for the lulls. The Federation, it was one on one of the earlier updates, the Federation just got added in. It was hilariously broken, and the only uh, character model that would spawn would be Bright. So you'd just have a colony full of people who looked exactly like Bright. You'd have all your commanders look like Bright. But if you tried to start the game with it, it would crash. So you couldn't do it, but I ended up conquering the Zom Republic, I think it was called. So Zom City, the capital of Side 3. And it was full of Brights. It was great. So they're pro Xeon supporter or Xeon Daikin supporters. More than twice, we have a big Zom in Asazabi. They're like maybe a quarter our strength. You know the narrator from the Gundam campaign? That's him. Hopefully, fo fold won't fold.
Oh, well, they actually do bring it up in this series. That's interesting. Makes sense why this is one that's included. Them Xeon guys. Here we go, Loof. Hey, look, it's a Tive. It's like a Musai, just a lot more expensive and a lot less, and a lot more shit, because they can't drop stuff on the planet. They were uh, stuff taken from the Side Three Self Defense Force and turned into actual warships. They weren't originally. Uh, they're like U boat, not U boats. Uh, patrol craft. They weren't like. Civilian ships converted, kind of thing. We want to destroy them though and steal their shit so I can buy new shit. Like maybe base jabbers. Nah, I'm not gonna use base jabbers. <laughs> 